Hey yo, what's up guys? It's uh, Matt with Odds Jam, and today I will be doing my four picks video. Um, just to give a brief reminder of how my four picks work, if for those of you who are new here, um, I do one lock, one underdog, one game prop, and one player prop. Um, the rules for the lock are the odds can't be worse than minus 200, so I can't do a situation where I pick the Bucks at minus 405, despite the fact that I do think they're going to beat the Panthers. Um, the underdog has to be plus money, so I can't do anything with this Raiders-Broncos game where uh, there is no official underdog at plus money. Uh, and then the same rules as with the player in the game prop as the lock, where the odds cannot be worse than minus 200. So can't be buying any props down or anything like that. Um, and then just to recap last week, my first successful week in a while, I went 3-1. and one. Uh, my only loss being the player prop, which was on a Saturday night. And today's video will only be going over, over Sunday. Uh, I did give a, pr a Christmas preview, so definitely make sure to check that out. And I'll be doing a Monday night preview on Monday. So today is just for Sunday's games. Um, so let's get into it. Um, looking at my first thought is when I look for the lock is to find a situation where the money line is better than minus 200 odds. And... Um, the best odds are not the uh, odds jam perfect line because that wouldn't be any positive value there. So there is a decent amount of options, uh, at least in the one o'clock slate, the four o'clock, not so much. Uh, so it looks like there's only three options that I could choose a money line. Uh, the the Bengals over the Ravens, um, minus 198 is pretty steep. I do think the Bengals win, but uh, the Ravens seem to have caught some magic with that guy, Tyler Huntley. Um, as of the time of this recording, though, he's questionable, but that game just feels like a no-touch to me, and I can honestly see the Bengals being on upset alert after uh, beating the Broncos last week. Uh, the Rams, in full disclosure, was going to be my um, was going to be my lock earlier in the day when I was looking at this, when they were, they were minus 160, but uh, obviously the odds have changed. Now the best odds you can get are minus 175, and there's not a ton of positive expected value there. And while the Rams are hot, uh, the Vikings just seem to only play in close games no matter what. And granted, the Vikings have been terrible. I, the, I could just see this being a weird game where Justin Jefferson goes nuts and the Vikings win. I'm not predicting it, but I'm not confident to make the Rams my lock. Um, and the Jets, yeah, right. So the next order of business is to look at a team um, where I think obviously the odds are not better than minus 200, but I think have a good chance of covering the spread. So... The Falcons are an option. I'll get to them later. The Bucks, 10 points is what the spread is. That's a lot. Um, I'm not, I do think that the Bucks are going to win and they're going to come out hot, but there's a lot of injuries there and I could just see this being uh, a struggle for the offense. The Chargers are huge favorites, but favorites, but the Texans are, uh, are feisty. The Davis Mills guy isn't too bad. Um, Eagles head coach has COVID, so I don't know if they're going to cover a huge 10 point spread and they literally just lost to the Giants um, a month ago, so I don't know. So let me go back to this Falcons game. So the Lions are going to be starting a quarterback named Tim Boyle. He has one career start in the NFL. Um, if you want to look at his stats, um, that was against the Browns. He went for 77 yards with two interceptions. That seems bad. Uh, if you want to look at his college stats, um, let's see. He has a touchdown to interception ratio um of 1 to 13 that also seems bad um i'm not sure why he's a starting quarterback uh i'm not sure that they're i'm sure or sorry i'm not sure why he's even a backup quarterback there's got to be someone better um so i have no faith in the lions at all i know they just got a huge win against the cardinals last week but i don't project that to go uh moving forward so betting on the falcons is a little scary but I just can't see this being a game where the um, where the Lions are even able to make it close. So what I'm going to settle on is taking the Falcons minus 5.5. So I'm going to make sure I get that touchdown. Um, it's too bad that there aren't enough props for them at minus 6 because I would imagine there would be some positive expected value there. Like there's nothing on Caesars. There's nothing on BetMGM. Um, but I'm gonna, So I'm going to take them at minus 5.5 minus on FanDuel. Um, you know, the Falcons aren't a, a great team by any means. Uh, if you look at their schedule, they have some ugly losses, but they also have some good wins. Um, you know, Matt Ryan's a professional. Um, you know, they, 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 when they've played terrible teams like the uh, the Jaguars, they, they beat 
by seven. They beat the Panthers by eight, who are cratering. Uh, they have a good win against the Saints. Beat the uh, the Jets by seven. So again, definitely not a good team by any stretch of the imagination. But I think that they're good enough to beat a Lions team starting Tim Boyle, and who are having some COVID issues themselves. Uh, I know they're getting some players back, but Hawkinson's out for the year. So uh, I'm gonna make this my hundred dollar my hundred dollar lock of the week. Again, it's a little scary putting my faith in the Falcons, but I think that uh, again, really just fading the quarterback there. I can't see him having really any success at all. So next order of business is finding an underdog. So these are always a little bit easier because there are more options to choose from. The only thing I really need to make sure is that the um, the odds jam perfect line isn't the best odds. So tons of options here. Obviously, I'm not taking the Lions. No way I'm touching the Panthers there. Um, the Ravens are an option. The Jaguars, I just, I just can't. Uh, so what I ended up settling on was the Bills. Um, I know that this is one's a little risky because the Patriots are uh, the NFL's darling. Despite losing to the Colts last week, I believe the Patriots still have the number one ranked defense in the NFL, according to DVOA. The Bills have number two. Um, and the Bills, you know, the um, just look at the math. So I'm getting that at plus 115. The IGM perfect line has it at plus 112, and there's no play on the Patriots. Um the last time these two teams play, played was in that ridiculous windstorm where the Patriots only threw the ball three times. <laughs> I don't think that's going to fly this time. It was kind of a wonder why the Bills didn't just load the box and make them throw it. For whatever reason, they didn't. Um, I still think that the Bills are the better team. The Patriots have some COVID issues. Uh, they're missing Ramondre Stevenson. They're missing Kendrick Bourne. They're missing Nelson Aguilar. Um and while the Bills are also having issues with their their receivers, Cole Beasley and uh, – who's an idiot, by the way. I just had to make sure I get that out there. And Gabe Davis. Uh, I, they still have Stephon Diggs. They, they seem to have found something with Devin Singletary, who is kind of the forgotten man who's been getting more work recently. So Bills money line I'm loving as my $100 underdog of the day. Um, for my game prop um, – Unfortunately, normally what I do is I look for the positive expected value page for my game prop. Uh, I try to find one where the situation goes from um, minus odds to plus money. I did consider this first half over 23.5 points for the Texans Chargers. Um, but what I ended up settling on, and uh, I, I um, unfortunately this, so as of right now, Ajdam is working on getting the team total to appear on this page. Um, I was able to calculate the Ajdam perfect line for this team total for the Giants specifically. Uh, they have it calculated at over under 14 and a half and the odds on the under are uh, minus 122. So I was able to calculate that and um, they had the over priced at plus 105. So first things first, if you want to take out the, the VIG on that, so minus 122 plus 105. They have the perfect line at about minus 112. And again, that is at 14 and a half points. So uh, looking at DraftKings, which I also have up here, I was able to find the Giants a full point better. Uh, so they could somehow get one touchdown, go for two, uh, and get another touchdown and, and still hit the under minus um, on minus 120 odds on DraftKings. And... Um, this is going to be my game prop of the day. So I gave you the math behind it, why it's a positive expected value play. Now, going into the actual numbers behind it, uh, I mean, there's just so, there's so many reasons, but I'll try to keep it concise because I could go on for an hour. Number one, uh, we don't know who they're starting. They are either starting Jake Fromm or Mike Glennon. Regardless, those teams are terrible. Um, if you look at their offense, so since... Uh, they've scored 23 points in one against the Raiders in November. They've scored uh, 10 points against the Bucks, 13 points against the Eagles, who they played this week, 9 points against the Giants. Uh, they did get 21 points against the Chargers, but that was mostly in garbage time. They scored 14 of those 21 in the fourth quarter when the game was well out of hand. Um, and then last week against the Cowboys, they managed 6 points. Um the Giants offense has been absolutely terrible. Uh, they're missing Sterling Shepard. They really haven't found anything with Saquon, Bar Saquon Barkley or Kenny Galladay. Um, 
Evan Ingram has been a disappointment. And then if you look at the Eagles defense, so I detailed this um, on my Tuesday night preview. Uh, the Eagles defense, uh, the general rule of thumb is if they play a good quarterback, fade them. And if they play a bad quarterback, bet on them. Um, and that if really holds true. So week one against Matt Ryan, I wouldn't say he's terrible. I certainly wouldn't say he's good. Uh, six points. Week two against the 49ers, they only scored 17. A better offense than... Uh, the Giants, but Jimmy G still blows. And still, 17 points is impressive. Blown out by the Cowboys. Blown out by the Chiefs. Only 18 to the Panthers when the Panthers were not nearly the train wreck they are today. Uh, two straight blowouts. Uh, Derek Carr lit him up in this game. I wouldn't say he's a great quarterback. I wouldn't say he's terrible. Uh, he's probably on Matt Ryan's level. Uh, so they went one for two with as far as mediocre quarterbacks. Six points to the Lions. Justin Herbert lit him up. 13 points to the Broncos. Um... They did give up 29 to the Saints, but if you look at the game, they gave up 22 of those in the fourth quarter. So again, they only had seven. Um, and that seven points was off a turnover. So the Eagles really only gave up uh, one touchdown that actually went the length of the field. The rest were on turnovers and then garbage time at the end. Um, it's 13 points against these same Giants. Uh, 18 points against the Jets, but that was all in the first half, and then they figured some stuff out. So I don't expect them to have as much of a slow start. And then last week against the Washington football team, uh, they basically gifted the other team, the offense, I should say, gifted the other team 10 points. Um, other than that, they really, they only gave up one real touchdown drive. So against the Giants, who, the team's just, just cratering. They ha- they just simply, you can tell that they're kind of giving up in the season. They don't want to play for Joe Judge anymore. Um the Eagles were their super were their Super Bowl this year after what happened last year with the whole tank gate, um, but they got that win. Even they still only scored thirteen points. So and that was with Daniel Jones. So um, the Giants' offense has just been absolutely a train wreck, and uh, fading them is very very exciting. And the fact that um, we're getting them at minus one twenty odds, where the odds jam perfect line has the over under um, at fourteen and a half at minus one twenty two. Uh, shows that that's a good bet and shows where the value is. So I'm going to take that as my game prop. And for the player prop, what I normally do is steal one from the positive EV page. Fortunately, not all of the lines have been posted yet. And I did want to make sure I got this video out before Christmas, obviously. So the only one is this Michael Carter, but it's not within the uh, it's not within the market with, and there's no other player prop for Sunday. So Uh, The Earth's one is obviously tomorrow. So what I ended up doing is going back to my roots and scanning the player prop page on DraftKings. And what I ended up settling on was the Justin Jackson anytime scorer uh, at minus 105. So that is going to be my next 100, uh, Justin Jackson anytime scorer. Uh, And my reasoning for that is... um, Let me just go to that game. So uh, Austin Eckler is out with covid which is unfortunate. Um, so assuming the starting role is going to be Justin Jackson and they're playing against a, where is that game? Um, they're playing against a Texans defense that if you, uh, so I, I pulled up the stats before I started recording, give up the most rushing yards per game in the NFL. Uh, teams just load up on the run against the Texans and they do it successfully. So um, Justin Jackson, it, A, if he's available in your fantasy league, pick him up because he's an absolute smash play. Um, and I think that the Chargers are just going to ride him. So um, him as an anytime touchdown score at minus 105, I think is a great bet. Uh, that's going to be my next 100. Um, unfortunately, like I said, there's no positive expected value play aside from that Michael Carter one. But I mean, going from plus 101 to plus 105, isn't really that great. Um, I guess that this is the under. So this actually was, when I looked at it earlier, was the over. Now it's the under. Uh, And either way, it's not within the market width. So uh, the Justin Jackson minus 105 anytime touchdown score, I'm very confident in. Um, So just to recap, unfortunately, I can't, I guess I can add it to my bet tracker. Um, But just to recap, uh, it looks like I added this one twice. Um, I'll just go ahead and modify this one. So It's going to be on DraftKings. It's going to be anytime touchdown score. Um, The odds are minus 105. And it is Justin Jackson. Uh, I just want to make sure that I I have the record of it on here so I can show everybody. Um, 
So my four plays are going to be highlighted here. I'll have a screenshot at the end as well so everybody can see. But it's going to be uh, the first one, my lock of the day, is going to be uh, the Falcons minus five and a half against the Lions. Uh, my underdog of the day going to be the Buffalo Bills at plus 115 odds. That is on win bet. Uh, my last two plays are both going to be on DraftKings. The game prop is going to be Giants team total under 15 and a half. And player prop is going to be anytime touchdown scorer, Justin Jackson. Again, that is on DraftKings. So uh, that's all I've, so I got for you today. Those are going to be my four picks. Um, would love to hear feedback again all the time. Anytime you guys got feedback, I'd love to hear it. You can follow me on Twitter at my handle below, Modi underscore sports. You can email me, Matthew at oddsjam.com. Uh, I'm very responsive to my email. And then you can also comment on the video below with any of your thoughts. Um, and that's all I got for you. So I just wanted to wish everybody happy holidays and happy betting, happy watching, and good luck.